From 2002 to present day, approximately 500 people have been attacked by wolves with nearly 30 of these attacks resulting in human deaths. Uh, I would request unanimous consent to enter uh, an article uh, from wolf.org, which does a little deeper dive into some of the data you just cited, uh, noting that of the 26 fatal wolf attacks uh, around the world during that 20 year period, uh, there was only one in the United States. This is Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert not only getting fact-checked in real time for misrepresenting facts, but also seemingly far more upset than I have ever seen her about the one death that has taken place in the United States in 20 years due to a wolf attack than she has ever been about any of the school shootings or any of the gun violence that I have seen. And after yet another deadly school shooting in the country that has by far the most deadly school shootings, I thought this would be a very good clip to play you. I think it perfectly illustrates the hypocrisy of the Republican Party when it comes to gun violence in this country. I mean, when's the last time you can recall seeing Lauren Boebert hold up a picture of a, of a victim that was killed in a school shooting or showing a picture that shows the damage an AR-15 style weapon can do to a child of, I don't know, let's say middle school age. Carlos Anticio in Walden, Colorado. He has a rescue dog here, Scooby-Doo. Well, Scooby-Doo, his cattle dog, and Buster were both killed by wolves. Scooby-Doo had his stomach ripped out and wide open. As much as I love dogs and as tragic as the deaths of Scooby-Doo and Buster probably were, we are talking about, and she is focusing her time on something that has killed one human being in the United States in the 20 years of the study done, instead of focusing her time on the 263 teens and children that have been killed this year so far as of February 2023. And unfortunately, obviously that number has now grown due to the deadly school shooting in Tennessee. Here's Lauren Boebert again battling it out with Jared Huffman, Democrat, the guy you saw in the first clip, fact-checking Lauren Boebert. This time, Lauren Boebert's making a case why she thinks that she should be able to bring a loaded weapon onto the committee floor. How many members feel like they would need to carry a weapon into our committee hearings? Got I one. feel I need one everywhere here. There everywhere? Is, oftentimes we are sure. harassed in the hallways. We yeah, walk alone. Did, did oh, so strong and tough and definitely not a snowflake. But if you get harassed in the hallway, you're going to do what? Pull out a firearm? But please do go on. And, and, hasn't you. and just uh, how, and would those be loaded weapons, presumably? Not an unloaded weapon. OK, that's helpful to know, too. Uh, and of course, we heard reference to the fact that, uh, you know, this amendment is not necessary because the rule prev prevents taking armed weapons around the Capitol and into the House chamber, but we know there are members across the aisle who have tried to take loaded weapons into the House chamber. On January 6th, I was following House rules. There's three places where members of Congress cannot carry a firearm. One of them is the House floors, and I was abiding by those rules. And when I heard those doors shaking, I didn't know what was on the other side. Fire! Really? You didn't know what was on the other side of the doors, you say, huh? Hmm, that's funny. Obviously, you must forget saying this January 6th in your objection speech, you know, the time you're objecting to the free and fair election that wasn't fraudulent. Oh, that I took this past Sunday to defend and support the Constitution makes it necessary for me to object to this travesty. Madam Speaker, I have constituents outside this building right now. I promised my voters to be their voice in this branch of government, which I now serve. It is my separate but equal obligation to weigh in on this election and object. Are we not a government of, by, and for the people? They know that this election is not right and as their representative, I am sent here to represent them. I will not allow the people to be ignored. Madam Speaker, it is my duty under the U.S. Constitution to object to the counting of the electoral votes of the state of Arizona. The members who stand here today and accept the results of this concentrated, coordinated, partisan effort by Democrats, where every fraudulent vote cancels out the vote of an honest America, has sided with the extremist left. So not only did you know damn fucking well it was your constituents outside, but you decided to keep up with the rhetoric that caused the riot in the first place. Even with the number of mass shootings, even with the number of people that have died, even though the fact that there's been more kids killed in schools and there have been officers killed in the line of duty this year, don't forget when Lauren Boebert not only said that we should ban the ATF, you know, the federal agency responsible for regulating alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, 
but also saying that she's disappointed with the number of weapons and the percentages of weapons that the United States owns and that we should get that number up. Lauren Boebert of Colorado took to the House floor yesterday to defend the Second Amendment. She condemned a new ATF mandate that requires gun owners to register any firearms that use stabilizing braces. Boebert called to abolish the agency. She also encouraged the purchase of more guns. Bureaucrats don't create laws. Congress does. This rule functions like a law that Congress never passed. ATF, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. In Western Colorado, we call that a fun weekend. But DC bureaucrats have used this agency to infringe on the rights of the American people. Gun-free zones are the most dangerous places in our country. The Second Amendment is absolute and it's here to stay. A recent report states that Americans own 46% of the world's guns. I think we need to get our numbers up, boys and girls. And if you find that just absolutely asinine, disgusting, and stupid after the amount of mass shootings and gun violence that we've had in this country, then you're absolutely correct. But let's not forget some of the other ridiculous and feckless responses to some of the worst shootings and tragedies in this country from the Republicans. 9-11 happened, we didn't ban planes. We secured the cockpit. Have one door into and out of the school and have that one door armed police officers at that door. There should be one entrance in and one entrance out in all of our elementary and all of our middle schools. Infrastructure protection is very important and it's clear that when we look at the flimsy fencing in this particular school that things could have been done differently. There are billions of dollars sitting out there after COVID for school schools that we should redirect re, uh, that money to allow the schools to use that to have one central point of interest to protect these kids. Having potentially teachers and other administrators who have gone through training and who are armed. What about getting a department that can look at young men that's looking at uh, women that's looking at uh, just social media? Overall, the solution is renewed faith, stronger families, more supportive communities. Just some of the dumbest bullshit you're ever going to hear, folks. I mean, they want to do everything. One hallway, one door, put guns in the, in the schools, booby traps, bulletproof glass, armored walls. What else? They want to do everything but fix the problem that is the guns. And even after the horrific, deadly school shooting in Tennessee, you have elected officials like Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeting shit out like this. She tweeted, How much more hormone like testosterone for mental illness was the transgender Nashville school shooter taking? Everyone can stop blaming guns now. And she wasn't even done there. She went on her other fucking account, whatever you want to call it, and tweeted this. The female Nashville shooter identifies as a man. So shouldn't we just blame white men again? Now, once again, we juxtapose all of that, what you just seen against somebody on the Democrat side, somebody like Representative Maxwell Frost, somebody who has empathy, compassion, and a reasonable understanding of the problem at hand. Here he is pointing out the absolutely disgusting reality in this country that if you have a child, God forbid, pass away under the age of 18, it's most likely that he or she died from a gunshot wound. If you have a child in this country and God forbid they die before the age of 18, the most likely reason is because they were shot to death. You know, I, I plan on acknowledging three people, both of them are not in this room anymore, you know, Manny and Patricia Oliver, who lost their son Joaquin Oliver in the Parkland shooting. To, to lose a child to gun violence, to see, the, to see the photos of your child sitting in a pool of blood I can't, I can't imagine that. You know, Manny and Patricia have dedicated their lives to fighting for a world where true justice can be achieved because unfortunately, there is no justice for the dead. And true justice is ensuring that this never happens again. I fight alongside Manny and Patricia Oliver. I believe that they are American heroes. And what they always say is they don't want their son Joaquin to be remembered as a victim. They want him to be remembered as an activist. And today, Republicans on this committee chose to sit in front of those parents and the survivors and organizers and advocates that are in the audience right now, people who are reliving their trauma, listening through this, people impacted by gun violence across the nation, and show that their priority is gun lobby money, manufacturers who profit off death, and creating fake narratives for political gain. 
Again, the leading cause of death for kids in America is guns. And today's hearing is about distracting the people from the truth. They want you to believe that the greater threat is the ATF and not the facts that are in front of us. We heard one of my colleagues bring up facts. Let's look at the facts, and I just said them. A hundred people a day. And I know it's easy to say a number and forget that behind every number, there's a human. There's a Joaquin Oliver. Enough is enough, not one more. And to all the organizers, advocates, survivors, and families here today, I'm so sorry that you've had to sit through this hearing. I'm so sorry that you had to see what happened outside to Manny and Patricia, who are just fighting for, for, for a world where no other parents have to go through what they went through. And I, for one, believe this has nothing to do with policy and everything to do with politics. And I won't be listening to another second of it, and I wouldn't blame you all if you made the same decision. I yield back. Love this video? Then you'll love the Midas Touch podcast. Listen as my brothers and I break down the latest news and chat with top political leaders on the fastest growing pro-democracy podcast in the world. New episodes drop every Tuesday and Friday. Add the Midas Touch podcast right now wherever you listen to your podcasts.